Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I am so thankful that you are here. So let me tell you, algebra represents more than 40% of the high set or the GED math test. And so I really want to make sure that you are prepared and ready to go. So the questions I have here are based on an actual practice test problem. And we're going to go over a variety of problems several times I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six different problems that we're going to go over. And I really want to make sure that you have a solid understanding. However, this is a little bit more of an advanced technique. We're going to be doing some factoring. And so if you don't have a solid understanding of algebra, it might be a little bit tricky. So watch the video a couple of times and maybe check out some of my basic math videos if you need just a little bit more algebra help. My friends, let's get started with the math. What are the zeros of the functions? f of x equals x squared plus 6x plus 8. Whenever you see something that says f of x, really that just means y. Or you can even put a zero. So I'm actually going to put a zero. So I'm going to say, I'm actually going to switch this around just a little bit. I'm going to go x squared plus 6x plus 8 equals zero. Because we're going to go back to that zero at, at the end. So what I have here is I have my x squared and the 6x is my two numbers that are added together, okay? And then I have my plus eight. So my plus eight is the two numbers that are multiplied together. So really what I'm going to do is I'm going to take eight right here and I'm going to see what are the factors of eight. So I know that one times eight equals eight. I know that two times four equals eight and nothing else, right? So what numbers added together give me plus six or a positive six? So it's going to be two and four. So really just by doing that right there, I can eliminate C and D, right? I know those aren't the answers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor, okay? So this is like the opposite of FOIL, okay? I did FOIL in my last video and I'm oppositing, if that's a word, <laughs> the FOIL. So I have here x, and I know it's going to be a plus, x plus, and then I have my plus zero also. Okay, and I'm just going to put a two and a four. Okay, so x plus two and x plus four. So what we're doing here is imagine I throw a ball and I'm trying to figure out where, where the ball's landing, okay? So here it's where it crosses the x-axis. So maybe I'm going like that, okay? And actually we could also do the quadratic equation to figure this out. But if you can factor like we're doing here, it makes it just a little bit easier, I think. Okay, so I'm going to take x plus two and then I'm going to have zero. And then I'm gonna do x plus four and equal that to zero. So now I just need to solve for x both times. So x plus two, I'm gonna subtract the two from both sides, subtract the two, sometimes I like to bring that down. And this cancels and I'm left with x equals negative two. And we'll do the same thing on the other one. So minus four, minus four, do that to both sides. And I am left with x equals, that cancels, negative four. So my answer here is b. So x equals negative two, and negative four. Next problem, what are the roots of the equation? Now I worded it just a little bit differently, but we're still looking for the same thing, right? We're looking for the, what is the x when it's equal to zero, or what is the root of the equation? So it's, it's the same thing. So really just look for this x squared, okay? And so I'm going to rewrite it Again, the first thing we're going to do is figure out what are the factors of the number that's all by itself, so six. So I have here one times six and two times three. Notice how it says positive six. Because it's positive six, 
I know that both of my numbers either have to be positive or both of my numbers have to be negative. But if I look at that negative 5x, that's a negative number. So that tells me that both of my numbers have to be negative, okay? And so if I have a negative 1 plus a negative 6, what does that equal? Negative 7. So that's not going to be my answer. So I'm going to take 2 and 3. But again, they're both going to be negative, okay? So I'll do my same thing that I did before. So I have negative 2 and negative 3. Again, negative 2 plus negative 3 equals negative 5. Or I could say negative 2 times negative 3 equals positive 6. So I'm just double checking to make sure that it works. All right, now I will go x minus 2 equals 0, and let's solve for x. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides, and that's going to cancel. And I have here x equals positive 2. And now we'll do the other side. x minus 3 equals 0. And I have a negative 3, so I'm going to add 3. This cancels out, and I'm left with x equals 3. And so here is my answer, C, x equals 2, and x equals 3. Next question, what are the roots of the equation? Now look at this equation. Does it look familiar? It should, because it's exactly the same as the one that we just did. However, instead of a positive 6, we have a negative 6. How did I come up with this? Because I was doing it and I accidentally wrote negative 6 instead of positive 6, and then I got the wrong answer, right? And so I decided, oh, we should do that one too. But it's really important to make sure that you double check that you are writing down the correct sign. Make sure it's a positive when it's a positive. Make sure it's a negative when it's a negative because that one error could completely change your problem. So again, we'll start with what the factors of six are. Okay, so this time, the two numbers, let's start here with this negative six. The two numbers multiplied together need to equal negative six. And either one could, right? I could go negative one times six, is negative 6 or negative 2 times 3 is negative 6, right? So I have to have one positive and one negative in order for it to be that negative 6, okay? So it could, at this point, it could be either. Now let's take a look at this negative 5, okay? So I know one number is positive and one number is negative. So looking at this, could I go negative 1, and positive 6? If I add negative 1 and positive 6? No, that's going to be positive 5, right? So that's not going to work. What if I go negative 6 and positive 1? So negative 6 plus 1 is going to be negative 5. So that's that's good. But let's look at the other ones just, just here too. So if I have negative 2 plus positive 3, that's going to be a positive one, right? And uh, so, so really that, that's not gonna work either. So we have here x times x equals zero. So again, I'm going to have a negative and I'm going to have a positive because of that negative six. So to get a negative five, I need to have a negative six and a positive one. One Okay, and we'll go over a few more like this because these ones are a little bit trickier. So, x plus 1 times x minus 6 equals 0. So, let's figure out what each one of those points is, okay? So, I have x plus 1 equals 0. And let's subtract 1 from both sides. And I have x equals, that cancels negative 1. And then we'll do the same thing. x minus 6 equals 0. 
we have a negative 6, so how do, what do we have to do? We have to add 6, right? So plus 6, plus 6, so that cancels, and I have here x equals 6. So my answer here is going to be D. But again, we're going to go over a few more of these, rewatch the video if you need to. Uh, I'll explain it slightly differently in the other ones, so hopefully it gets in your brain. But again, if you need a little algebra review, definitely check out some of my other videos because this is a little bit more of a more advanced algebra type of problem. Okay, my friends, here it says solve the quadratic equation. And again, there are two ways to do this. We're factoring, but you can also use the quadratic equation which my friends actually has a really fun song that goes to pop goes the weasel. So just two different ways to do it. Okay. But this is actually the easier way. So start with this way and then go to the quadratic equation. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out what are the factors of 16. So I have here one and 16, right? Two and eight. Hope you're doing this with me. And also, does 3 go into 16? No. Does 4? Yes. How many times? 4 times. Okay. So, I know that both of them are going to be positive or both are going to be negative. I have a positive 16, so, so either both positive or both negative. But, look here how I have a negative 8. So that tells me that both of these numbers are going to be negative. So x minus and then x minus equals zero. Okay, so of these two, if they're both going to be minus, which ones added together give me eight? That would be our, our fours, right? So I have x minus four and x minus four. Okay, so now let's solve and figure out where that point is. So I have here x minus 4 equals 0, and I'm going to add 4 to both sides, cancel that, and I have x equals positive 4, and we know what the other one's going to be because it's exactly the same, right? So x minus 4 equals 0, add that 4 to both sides and that cancels x equals 4. So my answer here is going to be a 4 and 4 is where it crosses that line. Okay friends, we need just a little bit of a break. So I want you to comment down below and tell me where are you from? I just love to find out where different people are from. So take a quick break, comment where you are and then we'll get back into the math. Okay, find the solutions for this equation. So I'm going to rewrite it. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is figure out what are the factors of 10. So I have here 10 and I have 1 and 10, right? 2 and 5. Does anything else go into 10? 3, 4? No. Right, so here we are with our factors. Now I have here negative 10. And so I know that a positive times a negative that is what gives me a negative, or it could be a, a negative times a positive or a positive times a negative, right? So I'm going to go x minus and then x plus equals zero. And so here I have negative three x. So that tells me that the bigger number is going to be negative. So if I add negative 10 plus one, is that negative three? No, that's negative nine, right? What about negative five plus two, right? So negative five, if I owe you $5 and then I give you $2, how much do I owe you still? Negative three, right? I owe you $3 still. So I'm going to have here, my five is going to be my negative and then my two is going to be my positive. Okay. So now let's figure out what it is. So I have here x minus 5 equals 0. So I'll add 5 to both sides. This cancels out and I have x equals 
positive 5, and then I have x plus 2 equals 0. Subtract 2 from both sides. And I have here x equals, that cancels, negative 2. So then my answer is C. Now notice how my answer is really 5, negative 2. And this answer says negative 2, 5. Does that really matter? In some cases, yes. But in this, no. Because I just put the 5 before I put the 2. And it's not really a big deal. So in this case, it doesn't matter which one, which one is first. What are the zeros of the function? Okay, so remember when we have f of x, that just is like a y. Or when we have f of x, we could just put the zero there when we're dealing with a quadratic. Okay, so let me rewrite it. Now this one here actually has a step more than the other ones do. Notice how all the other ones that we've done have just been x squared, right? But this one has that four in front of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take out that four, okay? So I am going to take out four from everything. This is called factoring. So four goes into four x um, and we're left with x squared. So how many times does four go into eight? two times, so I'm left with 2x plus 4 goes into 4, one time equals 0. So now I could just write here 4 equals 0. Does 4 equal 0? <laughs> no. So with, with that we have um, no solution. So now what we're going to do is we're actually just going to take this part right here, and I'm going to bring it down. So I have here x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 0. And now I'm going to solve for it just like I've been solving before. So starting with my factor, right? And we have 1. So <laughs> what times what equals 1? <laughs> Really just one times one, right? Those are the only factors that I have. So I need to figure out, are they positive or are they negative? So I have a positive one. So that could be either both, both are positive or both are negative. But I look here and I see that it's a positive 2x. So that tells me that they're both positive. So I have here x plus one and x plus one equals zero, and now I just solve for each one. So I have x plus one equals zero, subtract one from both sides, and I get x equals negative one, and it's really gonna be the same thing from the other side, right? x plus one equals zero, subtract one from both sides, and I have x equals negative one, and my answer then is going to be A. My friends, you did it. I am so proud of you. Comment below and tell me that you made it, okay? And tell me how you're feeling. Like, are you feeling pretty set on this? Or you feel like you need to watch the video a few more times, maybe brush up a little bit more on some of your math skills? Tell me how you're feeling. But I am so proud of you because this is a little bit more complex than some of the other things that we've done. But my friends, if you know how to do this, you will easily get a couple more questions right on your high set or your GED test. I just know you will. I believe in you and I hope that you believe in yourself too. I hope that I'm able to encourage you and make you believe in yourself because honestly, that's one of the keys on passing the high set or the GED test. But my friends, you have a beautiful day and again, do believe in yourself just like I believe in you, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace and God bless.